What's up guys, welcome back to Viewer Castles. Um, before we get started, a couple of things. I did just update the list uh, for Viewer Castles, so it's updated as of August 15th. If you've emailed me and your name isn't on there, just uh, send me another email because I might have list I must might have missed it. Um, <clears throat> I got some weird spam. I'm starting to get people who like apparently I'm getting popular enough where there are people who are spamming my email now um, with just like random stuff. So um, I sometimes lose emails, but I'm trying to keep them up. Like I've I've blocked a bunch of these. Uh, emails that are th sending me stuff and it's getting at least a little bit better. Um, a lot of it goes to my spam folder as well, but I had to look back through uh, two pages of emails to try to catch everybody's uh, email, so hopefully I didn't miss anyone. I've got uh, ten names um, on here, so that's like three and a half viewer castle episodes that I'll be able to do. Um, yeah, that list is down in the description below. You can check that uh, little Google Docs uh, thing that um, you can check to see if your name's on there. Um, other news... Uh, next week, sometime around maybe Wednesday or Thursday, um, there's going to be probably a one or two day stretch where there aren't any videos because my birthday's on Tuesday and I'll probably be busy those two days, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and then I work Monday and Sunday. So I have like a four day stretch where I can't record. So there's going to be a lapse of videos um, somewhere in that range. Uh, towards the later end because I'll pre-record up to a certain time I just don't know exactly what day that will be um, and then usually I have one day like Sunday that I don't have videos um, hardly ever Sunday or Monday I don't know one of those two days usually I don't have a video I usually take one day off um, so yeah that's pretty much it so we can get started here uh, the end time castle level is a 30 he's got similar crowns to me slightly ahead um, he's got this archer here uh, pretty good gear it's about it's a little bit higher um, hit points than mine, and I think mine is slightly higher DPS. Um, I have I have the exact same magical resistance, and the exact uh, the my magical resistance is the same as uh, my physical resistance. So both of, both of mine are 763. Um, so yeah, slightly weaker gear, but it's pretty much the same. Let's jump into this castle and see what he's got. 50% win rate. <clears throat> I generally tend to be in for some reason like these castles like if it's if it's a red castle I almost always beat it if it's a yellow castle I almost always lose I have no idea why that is I just uh, something about it and then viewer castles I tend to die all the time anyway all right so I'm just gonna get rid of these barricades because why not I also hate this bow I really wish I could find a ballista all right so I see a dampener up there I'm going to try to pull this from back here just gonna try to link everything up and then oh my god that was terrible all right, let's try this again. Get in here. I can't do that, quite yet. that didn't. Nope, it did. It did. It did. It did. I'm good. All right, pull this. <clears throat> Be as safe as possible. Let's see if I can get through it. I guess I could start playing these like as daring as possible, but I don't play very well when I'm talking anyway. So. It's kind of the whole reason why I got into YouTube to begin with, is like, the pre-recorded videos are a lot easier to do than live streaming, just because you have to be like, paying attention to chat and stuff like that, and I usually just play terrible when I do that. I had that problem when I used to stream StarCraft 2. Um, that's a pretty interesting group you have there. Like, the whole, the whole idea behind it is trapping them inside of this barricaded area with a bunch of derps, which do have high DPS. Um, I tried something similar to that. I don't know if you had a Defendatron. I tried one with a Defendatron, and uh, instead of the Silencer, I used Enrager Puppeteers to make it um, so that they attack a little bit faster and deal their damage a little quicker. Alright, so then we have a Spike Trap Room. Um, I'm not too big of a fan of these anymore. Ow, 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 that hurt really badly. <laughs> okay, alright. We're alive somehow. I just don't want these goat men to start coming across here right yet. I'm not ready. I need to potion first. Alright, we're good. Alright, let's see if I can kill these from here. <clears throat> Alright. So goat men are really strong, as you can see right there. I only have two potions left, and I think this is the second room, maybe the third room, um, that I'm entering right now, so I could have some trouble. Now generally in these mouse wheel rooms where they're barricaded off, 
I don't know if you have a hole in the barricades, but if they're fully barricaded off, the creatures won't aggro. I tend to actually just skip them and take two stars, but, uh, you know, obviously I'd only be able to take one star now because I've, I've, um, I've been taking a while because I'm talking about it. Um, I'm just going to jump in here and see. It looks like there is one hole right here. Maybe not. Yeah, there is. All right. I don't know why I potioned there. That was a little bit, a little early. I guess I can fight it back here. But yeah, I'm actually more of a fan of using um, Mausua rooms like I'm using in my castle currently, where they're like super minimalist and they don't have a ton of points attributed to them, but they still give that anti-kiting and like that feel um, of just taking damage from traps by itself. Right, because if you if like once you get rid of one side, the other side is actually kind of um, kind of pointless. Like it's pretty easy to get through. And then I'll probably die to the other side now, because that's usually what happens when I say things like that. But you can volley across there and deal a ton of damage to stuff, and then it all gets stuck over there anyway. And I could just wait for my volley cooldown to come up if I wanted to. I only have one potion left though, this is going to be a problem. I'm actually going to wait for... Normally I would just go across there and use Spiral Shot and try to kill everything without taking damage. But I think I need to be a little bit um, safer here. Because I can't use another potion in this room, or else I won't have any left for the boss room. Which I'm I'm assuming the boss room is either in one, is like the next room, or one more room and then the boss room. Like, I, I went through quite a few points. That's not the boss room, though. Um, I'm just gonna go. Alright, that's gonna throw me back, that's fine. Okay. Alright, we're good. Okay, and this is gonna be one of these rooms. This room, I'm, like, I really like the room. And I think it's one of the best that we have, but, uh, it's actually pretty easy to pull things, in general, by l just jumping on there momentarily and dropping a volley, and you don't actually take as much damage as you do from other rooms. Uh, that's the only weakness I see to this room. Unfortunately, I can't actually go in there because there's a goat man. I think he's on bull strike, though. I could, ru I could, I could probably dodge it. Alright, let's do it. I think I got hit by it. I did. How did I get hit by that? It's so buggy. Alright, and I think this might be the boss room as well, so that's good. I actually did manage to make it through with only one with one potion left. Um, but I took forever. Like, literally forever. But unfortunately, what the game is, how the game is right now, you can take as long as you want and still make it in two stars. But even back before, you know, chests would lock, um, and you wouldn't get any crowns if you uh, if you timed out of a castle. That used to be how it was. Um, I would still take forever on Beaver Castles because I just want to talk about everything uh, bit by bit. But yeah, it's a pretty good castle. Um, I think the first room, that derp room, could be improved a little bit with like. Um, Uh, an Enrager Puppeteer or something. Or even like a ba an old bad dog, if you have an old bad dog, is pretty good as well. I guess it's okay. Because the, the silence is pretty key in that specific setup, because uh, you're basically blocking them off with barricades. So if you can get in there and use Spiral Shot to like get away from them, because a lot of the time Spiral Shot will one-shot barricades, and then you'll just go over them completely, um, that'll be too pretty easy. So I guess the silence is pretty key there as well. Uh, but yeah, pretty good castle. We'll jump into number two in just a second. Alright, next up is Twer Turkil. Uh, castle levels of 30. He's got every character at level 30. I have no idea who he validates with. I think he's an archer as a main, but I mean, that's some pretty amazing gear on Knight. Oh my god, that's amazing. <clears throat> I guess I guess the DPS isn't as high as you would think because of the double damage. If you if you looked at this, this like pre-double damage update, though, that would have been crazy. Um, but they are mostly legendaries. They're not actually epics. It's just the the hit point amount is like so high that he'll just tank everything. Um, but he'd probably be pretty slow going through a castle. I think Mage is about the best gear that he has out of everything it seems like. Yeah, it seems like Mage might be the main. Although the Archer has the costume. Costume of Darkness. I don't even know where you get that to be honest. Is that a new thing? I don't even know. I haven't looked in the costume area in forever. Alright, let's just jump into this castle. 
Uh, 1400 crowns, 40% win rate. Um, that doesn't really mean anything. 40 and 50% are basically the same. Like 40, 50, 60 are pretty much identical. When you get down to the, into the 30s, it usually is pretty easy, the castles are. If you get any lower than 30s, it's usually because they have low level mobs or just really bad design, like no traps whatsoever or something. Alright, so I've seen a lot of people doing this recently, where they uh, they just put barricades in like every empty room. Like it's the same empty corridors that you see with mines possibly at the end of them. Um, or not, because, I mean, that's just the way that you do it, right? Some of them have mines, some of them don't, and then the attacker knows which ones there are so that they can time the person out a little bit easier. Um, you're gonna time me out anyway, I can just tell you that right now, because... Viewer castles... I don't know the last time that I actually made it in time for a castle in viewer castles unless I was over level. Alright, so continuing on. Alright, I have no actually I have actually no idea where I'm supposed to go right now. I'm t totally lost inside of this castle. There's these rooms as well. Um, I don't know why, but the minimap looks kind of weird with these rooms. Like, they don't even look like they're connected in some places. The only good thing about having barricades in between these areas, and a reason why I personally wouldn't do it, um, I might do it, I don't know. But the reason that I could say, like, the argument that I could give for not using it would be that, like, archers can get their mana back and actually travel travel a little bit quicker through them if they're trying to go fast, because they can, like, auto-attack things once or twice as they're going through, and they regain their mana from, for roll. Like, a lot of the time when you're rolling through a castle that has those chasms like that, you'll get to the actual point of the castle, and you won't have enough uh, mana for volley. And a lot of the times you initiate with a volley. But th I've just made it to the to the uh, beginning of the castle, and... Um, Alright, there's a Jimbo in there. And uh, I, I'm getting timed out, so... Alright, so what I'm going to try to do is get to the end here, and aggro these. I could actually jump in with these. I don't, I don't think it's going to be too bad, to be honest. Um... I'm not actually too scared of Jimbos these days. You're also your dampener didn't aggro for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, you might want to take a look at your aggro, cir ag your uh, aggro circles, because that would have helped a lot with me be not being able to one shot the uh, use my headshot if he would have um, if he would have done that. Because I had these this cross of mine here and Springboard trap here, so my option would be to go like right up next to him if I was silenced, or to just stand there and auto attack him instead of headshotting. And he might have been able to get up close to me and put me at least in a little bit of a worse position. These are the things that I like, though. I like I like these um, these rooms specifically for this because it's really good at anti forward kiting. The problem is these rooms. Like these rooms are kind of just like here, and there's not really much you can do with them, and it, it just leaves a lot of space. Like I do like the mouse wheels, but there's so much commitment here. There's so many points. Okay, whatever. I didn't really want to go in there yet, but I'll just volley it. There's dead ones in there, so I can't actually walk into the that room. Or I'll tell die. Or I might die. It's dangerous. Alright, the devil one doesn't want to come out. I have to go back a little farther. That's why I specifically don't like these rooms, though. Okay, this is scary. Okay, this guy is just not attacking me. I don't know what's wrong with him. Alright. Um, but yeah, I don't like these rooms because this doesn't really make a good initiate room. Like, th it's a choke, but it's not a good one. It's only like one hex once you get there. And you can volley around the corner if you're standing like here. So that's why I don't like this room leading into this. And that's why you see a lot of empty space in my castles because I used that, that same setup, but then I didn't do anything with this room up until like my next big choke. Which is another another reason why I use mouse wheel rooms also. Alright, this one is a little bit scarier. I can't see what's up there. Um, the double rotating flame trap makes it so that you can't quite see up there. I see a silence trap, that's about all I see. Uh, so what I have to do is kind of wait for this to not be rotated towards that, and then just hope. Okay, this is really, really scary. Yeah, I died. Twelve hundred, two twelve hundred hits on Devlins. Usually they hit me for nine hundred. Those are on the upper range of their damage. All right. If I was able to kite that, I think this is the boss room. So I was pretty close. I still had four potions too. It's just uh, getting through that room is is pretty tough, especially if you get knocked into the Devlins. And that's what I talked about. Like Devlins are weak in the longer range areas, 
but mid-range, if you get thrown into them, it's they do deal their damage so quickly. You have to be super careful with them. Um, I don't know why the rest of them didn't come, but I might die again here. Let's see if I can kite forward. Oh, and a stabbing tin as well. I actually like this boss quite a bit. Um, other people aren't a big fan of him. I think he's pretty good. Uh, he's really weak to... Uh, what is it called? Bear traps. Oh, okay. Potion kind of bugged. I don't know. I think it. I think it just lets you use a potion like after you died for just a split second. So if you time it just a little bit poorly, uh, it's bad. But yeah, Stabbington's a little weak to bear traps because he's so big. He'll hit. The, he'll hit literally every bear trap you throw down, and he'll get. He'll just get stunned and then like run away. But uh, at the same, at the same token, like he's so big that he'll hit you. Like it's so hard to dodge his leap strike like that. Give me number 42s, I need more hot rollers. Alright. Alright. Yeah, pretty good castle. Um, I don't know, it's, it's similar to mine in some ways. Like, I think you just work a little bit harder on, like, your anti-kite area. And you could even do something... Uh, a little bit more similar to mine where you have that one room that there's like that you go into that T junction and you have a bunch of mouse wheels and you lead that into a group and you notice that group didn't really do any damage and it wasn't even really scary for me because I'm just able to kite backwards pretty easily. Um, if you used one of your early rooms that have your mines in it or that have your barricades in it rather, uh, you could like take one of those out and put them put it farther into your castle somewhere, and just leave that empty space. Like, it doesn't matter. You're going to have empty space regardless. That T-junction room is too big to, to take up the entire space with traps, so you're having empty space anyway. You could do that room better and get a few more points out of those mouse wheels that you have at the beginning, because you have, like, eight to ten mouse wheels right at the beginning right there. You could take those out and make, like, a, I don't know, um, an actual mouse wheel room or, you know, use a different room completely. I don't know. I think you could do that specific one a little bit better, though. That's like the only... I think that's the weakest one out of all of it. The rest of them are fine. It's just... Kiting things is just too easy right now. Um, let's jump into number three in just a second. Alright, and lastly we have Unix Wolf. Castle level is a 27. Looks like it's validated on this mage right here. Um, pretty much yellow gear all the way down the line except for a staff and gloves, but the gloves are level 22. So slightly weaker gear than normal, lower resistances. Um, yeah, alright, so let's just jump into this and see where we're at. That's a 50% win rate regardless. I don't really think it matters too much when, like, gear for validating your own castle. Like, I don't think there's a castle that you can't validate even in like exceptional from the uh, from the blacksmith gear, like you can try it unlimited amounts of times, and there's nothing that's so strong that you like would not be able to validate. So, which is actually kind of my hope. Um, you can actually see the shadow of something up there. I don't know what exactly I was seeing. It looks like maybe it was a goat man um, or a smelly warrior. I'm not sure which. I know there was a goat man in that group. I'm not sure about smelly warriors. All right, so let's see if there's anything that didn't die to that. Okay, there was. Just a couple skeletons. Alright, I think that's it. Oh, that was kind of dumb with me. Alright. Um, yeah, it looks like Goatman, Devlin, Dr. Skull, Smelly Warrior. Yeah, I saw one of those as a shadow. Um, I think that's because it's an outside room. Which is actually kind of interesting. I wonder. I wonder if you could use another room here, and it would be like just as effective, and you wouldn't be able to cast that shadow. It doesn't really matter. Most people are gonna try to kite that room anyway. The cross corner bridge, cross bridge, whatever it is. All right. So I think there is a creature up there. I think I saw one. Yeah, there's something up there. I can't quite see what it is, but I'll try to volley it. All right. Looks like a Jimbo. Two Jimbos. Um, I'm just gonna go. For it. I don't. I'm not too scared of Jimbo's right now. Although I do, I do agree with you that I think uh, personal bubble Jimbo's are the best out of out of the two. Uh, the problem with that is what happened there is when I volleyed them down, 
uh, they were too far away from my hero so that they they didn't actually go into their like personal bubble shell. Like if you get a certain distance from Jimbo's, they'll come out of that shell and move a little bit quicker towards you. And since I was so far away that they they weren't able to shield themselves from the damage of my volley. Um, trying to think of what you could do. Probably you need some sort of pressure besides the two mouse wheels because like the silence trap isn't going to stop me completely. All it's going to do is slow me down. It's just going to make me stand there and wait for the volley. Like it goes away after a little bit. So like even a ballista trap would be better, or a rotating flame trap would probably be even better than a ballista, um, just because it's like there and constantly dealing its damage around that area. So I would at least have to take damage if I stopped to try to volley that. All right, this one, there's no trap pressure stopping me from engaging this however I want. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna headshot the the wall guardian and then I'm gonna volley on top of everything, even if the um, Defendatron doesn't die right away, the volley will kill it and probably kill all of the creatures uh, around it. So that's the idea. All right, Defendatron died, and everything else will die. It's too e it, like it, it makes it too easy if you can see a group beforehand and like plan out how you want to attack it. Obviously, I wouldn't do it that slowly uh, in a normal castle, like if I was just going through it. But I wanted to just explain it to everybody. Same as this one, you could see that derp a little too easily. That's why trap pressure before groups is always so important because you want to keep someone uh, on their toes. You know, if they go, if they jump into something because they don't want to take trap damage, then they might jump into something super dangerous, like a bunch of devlins or, you know, even that group. You know, a couple cyclopses that smash down on you. I had someone where their boss room was just two Pete Pondmores that were on uh, the smash ability, and if you got thrown into there, there was like a jelly wall, and there was a bunch of, um, you know, springboard, springboard, springboard trap pressure on this side, and you jump into there, you get thrown into the jelly wall, two uh, ground slam peat polymorphs hit you for like 1600 each. They're actually probably better than Jimbo's now, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I think Jimbo's and the the ground pound guys do similar damage. I think it's like like a 400 less on a, on a peat polymorph. Um, there are more points, but... Again, same same concept here. I can see that there's goat men up here. There's nothing stopping me from just standing right here and volleying them down. A lesser player might roll in there because it's a little hard to see. You know, you have to take your time at least a little bit in some castles. You know, you want to see what's coming before you before you just jump into it if you can. And that's why you you noticed in the last uh, couple castles that I ran is it's like there's tr some there's trap pressure where I'm trying to constantly rotate back and forth to see what I can actually see that's coming next, and that's what people do. Um, when there's no trap pressure, it's very easy to like just jump in here, and I can see exactly what's coming and be like, okay, well what I probably want to do this time is what I want to do is volley everything. These two archers will die to the volley. It'll take two ticks of the volley to kill these, and then I can headshot uh, right after the volley, and it'll finish off the, the Scorpio. So like volley, headshot, everything dies. And I can plan that out because I've been playing the game so long that I know that the damage that my character does to things. Again, same same concept. There's a bunch of uh, Aurora Guardians here. I actually might be able to skip these unless there's a boss. I can't really tell if there's a boss. It lo doesn't look like there is. So this is another uh, another thing that um, a lot of lesser players would just like go right in there and start attacking. And if these skeletons start attacking, I'll be pretty angry. Um, but since there's no boss here, you have to move everything up a little bit closer to the entrance, or else you're, it's it's going to be able you're going to be able to skip the entire um, boss room. So my biggest thing is like work on your trap pressure. It's pretty important. Traps, like even if they seem useless, they're actually really important for keeping the attacker on their toes. Um, I used to say that you should have traps like throughout your entire castle to keep pressure on them the entire thing, which is probably a good concept for newer players, but if you're really good at like creating zones where you put pressure on the person, you can kind of leave certain areas um, empty. It's not that big of a deal. It does give the attacker a little bit of time to breathe and like collect themselves, but I mean they can do that anyway if they want to just like pause the game or something like that. Um, but yeah, so let's um, end the video because that is number three. So uh, as always, if you guys enjoyed what I do, please subscribe. If you want to be a part of your requests, you can email me at frenzycastleruns at hotmail.com. Um, that'll be in the description along with a link to... Uh, spreadsheet that I add all of the names to. It takes me... The last time I updated my 
uh, sheet was like July, and then I just updated it August 15th. So it's, it took me a month last time. But that's because we've had three patches this month. Um, I think there's been four patches since I updated the list. Like, I just had a lot of other videos that I had to do. I wasn't able to do uh, viewer castles for a while. But I'm back doing them again, and I'm not, like, super behind either. There was a time when uh, this game was, like, really popular, and uh, I had so many names coming in every other day. Like, I would ha I had to run two viewer castles a day, and I still wasn't able to keep up. It was still too much, so... Um, I'm good with just having, like, a handful of viewer castles coming in every once in a while, but... That being said, I mean, don't don't feel like I don't want you to send in your name. I'm, I like running people's castles. It's it's good for like learning about different ideas and different things that people are doing, and uh, it's good for you know you guys like hearing tips from me and stuff like that. So, and then you know killing me is always fun as well, and seeing it seeing it on uh, on stream. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.